Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Is BlackRock keeping the Bitcoin price low on purpose, guys? This is coming from Crypto Rover here on Twitter. As you guys have probably seen, Bitcoin is now, uh, while well, it's trying to crawl its way back up, let me put Bitcoin on the hourly. We've gotten a lot of movement over the last uh, 24 hours or so. Yesterday morning, we were talking about this pump for Bitcoin, and then uh, by the afternoon, it came right back down, basing uh, forming a new high actually tried to come back up but guys the bears sellers they're trying to keep it down here so uh, we did see another big move down uh, with uh, quite a lengthy wick so right now bitcoin is trading at about 27,100 per coin so guys uh, it is up a little bit when we look at this uh, though on the daily um, you know we're not seeing the kind of momentum that uh, we really do need to see in order to confirm bullish activity. Now, uh, when it comes to the rest of the crypto market like XRP, we're seeing the contagion spread, which is good for us XRP hodlers. We have seen a steady increase for XRP over the last 24 hours or so. And it seems like XRP was trending for a while there under 50 cents. Well, right now XRP is trading at about 57. So 0 0.507, not 57, 0 0.507 cents. Uh, so, you know, the rest of the market pretty much following suit, guys. Market cap is even up a little bit. Uh, we've been seeing it in that 1.07 region for a while. Now it's at $1.08 trillion. Uh, we can see 24-hour volume is up by about 34%. And dominance for Bitcoin, though, still holding on. So a bit of a green market today, guys. We've got some uh, top performers like Toncoin. Solana's doing fairly well. Even XRP is up 1.74% as of the time of this recording. But it all comes back to Bitcoin. And so, you know, when Crypto Rover says this, I kind of get what he means here. It appears that BlackRock might be manipulating Bitcoin's price. The SEC's actions against the crypto market could be more than just about regulation. Their aim might be to slow the crypto market, allowing BlackRock and other giants to accumulate Bitcoin at a lower cost. I mean, the trend is the trend is the trend. And so, um, you know, whether these guys feel like they can or whether they actually do have the means to manipulate Bitcoin. There are still a lot of other actors that could uh, react and could uh, play into this too. So, you know, this strategic price suppression could benefit major players once they hold significant amounts. The SEC may become more crypto friendly. Now, in yesterday's video, which I will link up here, I did show a few clips of Larry Fink and his opinions on uh, not just Bitcoin, but the crypto market. Obviously, BlackRock is very bullish on Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, behind the scenes, most likely they do invest in other cryptos too. Um, but, you know, Bitcoin, again, the pulse of the market. And, uh, you know, they want to get these ETFs approved. So, you know, it's a bit of a game here. Uh, the recent dismissal of claims against Grayscale hints at the SEC's weakening stance. With regulation and spot ETFs on the horizon, Bitcoin's price might surge soon. So, you know, even... Just, uh, you know, going back, when in doubt, zoom out and, uh, you know, let's go on the weekly here. Well, no, this is XRP. Let's bring up Bitcoin again. Guys, we are in this transitional period for crypto. Uh, 2022 was the bear market that was very, very well defined, uh, similar to what we saw back in 2018. So a very, very well defined bear market. But 2019 was a bit of an up and down. It was a bit like this uh, before we hit the halving. And then once we hit the halving 2020, 2021, those were very bullish years. So, you know, 2023, the first year after 2022, a bit of a transitory year. So, uh, you know, whether we are at the bottom now or if we're going to see the market going lower, there's going to be the short window of opportunity, uh, you know, before prices really do take off. So it's interesting to see this bullish activity, but, you know, it's not unprecedented. The other thing I wanted to mention is what's going on with regards to U.S. lawmakers, guys. This one courtesy of Mr. Man here on Twitter. U.S. lawmakers advance legislation blocking the digital dollar. So we got Tom Emmer come out the other day proposing a bill to block a central bank digital currency in the U.S. And so on September the 20th, the House Financial Services Committee will mark up two bills blocking a potential digital dollar in the United States. The U.S. House Financial Services Committee is moving forward with their legislation aimed at preventing the issuance of a central bank digital currency. So boom, positive news there, according to an announcement from Chairman Patrick McHenry. The committee will mark up two bills about a potential digital dollar on September the 20th. Markups are sessions in which lawmakers discuss the details of a bill. And so as they say it here, uh, you know, it's a crucial step before legislation moves to the House floor. What they can do when they're marking up these bills is, you know, go through 
everything related to this central bank digital currency. And you know, the biggest threat that uh, CBDCs pose the public is really the privacy issue and the control issue. And those two things really go hand in hand, right? Uh, I'm sure Americans do not want their government meddling in their financial business. So here we have it. Now, Congress has the opportunity to, uh, you know, go through this proposed CBDC with a fine tooth comb and say, okay, can you control the public with this central bank digital currency? Is it a tool for, uh, you know, is it a mechanism for control? Is there a lack of privacy? Is the government going to be looking into what people are going to be spending their money on? So on and so forth. So one of the bills is for the Digital Dollar Pilot Prevention Act, which prohibits the Federal Reserve from initiating pilot programs to test CBDCs without approval from Congress. The legislation was introduced by Representative Alex Mooney in May. Uh, the Fed recently denied any decision on whether to issue a CBDC, claiming it would only proceed uh, with the issuance of a CBDC with an authorizing law. So the Fed is even saying, you know, this is not imminent. Uh, however, right, they're, they're, they, they want to be ready in case they do need to implement one. And so, I mean, Congress is doing the right thing here, I think. And, uh, you know, it's great to have guys like Patrick McHenry and Tom Emmer, uh, just as two examples on there to, uh, you know, keep them honest. Here's a quote. The Federal Reserve Bank shall not offer a central bank digital currency or any digital asset that is substantially similar under any other name or label indirectly to an individual through a financial institution or other intermediary, reads the bill. So there is the latest, guys. Congress will be looking at this bill tomorrow, September the 20th. Wanted to keep moving too, and wanted to bring you guys this clip of Jim Rickards. Now, he just revealed how much the BRICS currency can be worth. We have combating economies. Well, I mean, not uh, actively combating, but I mean, the US has been supreme for decades. I mean, for a lot of reasons, but, you know, especially the economy. Well, the BRICS nations are looking to challenge that. And so, you know, Jim Rickards was explaining how a currency could work and how it could be linked to gold, not backed by gold. He makes it very, very clear. He explains it here in this clip. I'm going to play you guys this. Listen to this. We're going to have a common currency and it will be now here. This is important. I would say gold linked. There was a lot of misunderstanding about this. Everyone's saying gold backed, you know, get your bricks unit. It's called a brick. I mean, I don't know what they're going to call it, but, you know, one unit is is defined as a weight of gold. And we don't know what the weight is. You know, so I'll just say an ounce. I, it could be a kilo. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to call it. I don't know what the weight is. But one unit would be defined as a weight of gold. So let's say one brick, if you want to call it that, equals one ounce of gold. Um now, here I go back to Aristotle, who kind of invented the transitive law. And this is this is the brilliance. And this is all Russia behind it. This is, you know, they, they didn't invent chess, but they it is their national sport. So if you say one brick equals an ounce of gold, and the weight doesn't matter, just again, it's just it's just math. And we know that a weight of gold has a dollar value because the gold, the global gold market is in dollars. And you can you can buy gold with euros, but all the pricing, the futures, the derivatives, um, the, the the unallocated forwards, all the junk that J.P. Morgan sells, all of that is in dollars. So um, if a brick equals an ounce of gold, an ounce of gold equals, you know, today, uh, you know, whatever, 1950, give or take, um, to a simple transit of law, you get a brick dollar exchange rate. But here's the key. You're not linking the brick to the dollar you're linking the brick to a weight of gold which means that as the dollar gold uh, as the dollar value of gold fluctuates and brick is one brick is pegged to gold the brick dollar exchange rate is floating through a transit law but the bricks don't have to do any work in other words make the dollar investors in the united states do all the dirty work they have to they have to maintain the market they got to speculate they got to hedge they got to commit capital. The bricks are just free riders. They just sit there and say, hey, we're an ounce of gold. A goal, you know, what is it today? Let's take a look. So that's part of the brilliance of this. And by the way, this is exactly, this is exactly what John Maynard Keynes proposed to Bretton Woods. So linking your currency to gold uh, basically allows you to sit back. And uh, what he's saying here is now the U.S., they're the ones that have to do the dirty work, speculate, uh, because the U.S. dollar will be that floating currency and no longer will that uh, BRICS currency be. I mean, once that BRICS currency does come out and once it is linked to gold and, uh, you know, he doesn't give a measurement here, whether it's an ounce or a kilo or whatever it ends up being. 
Um, but it's an interesting concept. And uh, I don't know if you guys caught at the end of that clip. He says that's what James Maynard Keyes proposed to the Bretton Woods Committee all those years ago. So very, very interesting, I got to say, you know, when we're talking about digital dollars and perhaps squashing a CBDC, I mean, that would be for retail. But we do have these other issues when it comes to the economy, world powers, and uh, I mean, ego to an extent as well. Mr. Man just commenting on this, just as the BIS states in Prudential Treatment of Assets in SCO 60.11, a crypto asset is to be redeemable for a predefined amount of the reference asset, the peg value to one ounce of gold and convertibility to one USD. So even the BIS did refer to this, the reference assets, which one unit of a crypto asset is designed to be redeemable is referred to as the peg value. So, you know, it's, all this is very interesting, paying attention to where the market is going, how these big players, uh, you know, are planning to uh, manipulate, I don't want to say manipulate, but planning to control, I guess, control the market using a new currency that if linked to gold, once linked to gold, I guess we could say, could change the face of finance. And so, you know, banks Obviously, realizing this, global banks are already getting ready with their systems, leveraging RippleNet and XRP. Even UK customers can now get up to 4% cash back in XRP when you guys use the Uphold card. So I talked about this a little while ago, but now it looks as though this is released. Uphold's UK customers can get up to 4% cash back in XRP on day-to-day -day spending, guys. Get up to 100 pounds cash back per month paid in XRP and no foreign fees anywhere in the world. So you guys can learn about that there. Uphold did uh, also just post a little video here, 30 seconds long, which I will uh, link in the description of the video if you guys are interested. So 100 pounds cash back per month paid in XRP specifically. So thought that might interest some XRP holders there. So banks, they're not messing around, but are they actually making the right decisions? I mean, globally, banks have realized, okay, blockchain technology, this is what we need to adopt. Uh, you know, enter RippleNet, XRP. Most of the world, I can say, uh, you know, more or less has adopted some type of blockchain, some type of DLT technology. And in a lot of cases, these are private blockchains, companies like uh, Stellar, companies like Ripple, so on and so forth. Well, guys, here's what Citibank has decided to do. As you guys probably already know, Citibank is launching a walled garden token. This one coming from Tony Edward here on Twitter. Uh, it was recently reported JP Morgan was looking into building a digital deposit token. See what is happening, folks. Disruption is at their doorsteps and they are desperately trying to avoid disruption by utilizing blockchain and building their own tokens. And for those of you guys who have been in the space long enough, five plus years you know, we were talking about this concept years ago, 2018, the fact that these banks have to adopt or they will die. And uh, now they're in the phase of, OK, we realize we're going to die if we don't adopt. So but but we don't want to actually adopt the private technology. So let's build our own. Boy, are they going to just waste a lot of time and money. <laughs> okay, so Tony goes on to say, and some wonder why Gary Gensler and the SEC have been attacking crypto projects and companies. Gary was weaponized by the banking incumbents to kill crypto projects and companies who are disrupting them. And so to the news guys from Cryptic Poet here, City debuts their token service. So City debuts their token service in latest foray into digital assets. So here's what's happening, guys. New offering turns customer deposits into digital tokens. Uh, pilot program focuses on trade finance and cash management. So Citigroup debuted a token service that's part of a broader push to offer digital assets to institutional clients. Actually, uh, you know, this article uh, isn't too long. I guess I'll go with the uh, Decrypt article because they explain it a little better here. John Deaton, though, before I get into that, they laugh at it, ignore it, fight it, get regulators to sue over it, and then they adopt the technology. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. So Decrypt published this uh, just yesterday. Citigroup will let rich clients use private blockchains to transfer assets. So here's essentially how it's going down. The City Token Services product uses blockchain and smart contract technology to allow institutional clients to send money across borders quickly, City said on Monday. So this just came out yesterday. The technology will use a private blockchain, not a public one like Bitcoin or Ethereum. It added that City Token Services will provide automated trade finance solutions 24-7. Digital asset technologies have the potential to upgrade the regulated financial system by applying new technologies to existing legal instruments and well-established regulatory frameworks. So that is, I think, the sticking point for these banks. They want to kind of yell it from the rooftops, make it very, very loud and clear that this is all very regulatory compliant and it's uh, already using our well-established regulatory frameworks, and these are legal instruments. 
Uh, you know, the idea, according to City, is to streamline the process of making large transactions by digitizing bank guarantees and letters of credit in the trade finance ecosystem. The bank worked with uh, integrated logistics companies Maersk on a pilot to see how it could work in the shipping industry. City's Monday statement said... Uh, the shipping industry can be a challenge for banks as collecting payments and processing transactions can be cumbersome and complex. Now check this out. City claim that the technology used in the pilot is expected to reduce transaction processing times from days to minutes. Uh, Maersk's regional treasury uh, manager for the Americas, Marie-Laure Martin, uh, added that we are pleased to have collaborated with City in the successful test pilots for the guarantee solution using digital tokens and smart contracts. Well, Look at what City has done, creating their own system, their own walled garden that I'm sure their competitors will not want to use. So what happens, Citibank, when you have a client? And, uh, you know, let's talk about these big clients that uh, companies like City do have. Big investors, big money. Do you really think they have all their money in one bank? Just Citibank? Really? Really? You really think so? They would be stupid to think that. And so creating this walled garden with their own proprietary technology seems pretty ridiculous, doesn't it? Remember when Brad Garlinghouse said that City would probably be the last bank to partner with Ripple? I don't remember those words specifically. However, I do remember this clip here, guys. Cowboy Crypto posting this. To really boil it down, Ripple is competing with the liquidity of City and the messaging of Swift and One because we are both messaging and liquidity. Guys, this was Brad Garlinghouse from, uh, I think this was from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Davos 2023. Listen to this. Messages to banks that have liquidity. So to some degree, Citibank and HSBC, uh, really the top two, JPM, those are the top three liquidity banks. And when you're sending Swift messages, you're sending messages to banks to release liquidity and making sure the debits and credits match. So to some degree, really boil it down, Ripple's competing with the liquidity of City and the messaging of Swift, but in one, because we're both messaging and liquidity. Ripple is competing with the liquidity of City and messaging of Swift all in one. And uh, you know, it was funny that uh, even back then, Brad Garlinghouse was uh, using City as that example. Fast forward to today and look at what City has finally revealed. Uh, I also wanted to bring this up, guys, another clip here from Jim Knox. Let's listen to what Brad Garlinghouse has to say about the Citibank partnership. Well, this is not uh, directly about the Citibank partnership, but about the walled garden technology and what banks, uh, you know, really are trying to clamor to do, even though there's already a better solution out there. Listen to this. Well, let me start by saying I, I think it's great for the blockchain and crypto industry to have players like JPM leaning in. Thumbs up. Yep. That's great. Uh, that's the only nice thing I'm going to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the I got asked this last week. I was speaking at a Morgan Stanley conference, and somebody asked me, you know, there was this headline, set, set of headlines about, you know, what, about the JPM coin. Right. And I, this guy was from Morgan Stanley who was interviewing me. I said, so is Morgan Stanley going to use the JPM coin? And he's like, well, wait, probably not. You know? And so, well, is Citi going to use the JPM coin? Is B of A going to use the JPM coin? Is PNC? And the answer is no. And so does that mean we're all going to have these different coins? And does that mean like we're back to where we are, where there's right. lack of interoperability? So like, well, I don't get it. One more quick thing on the JPM coin. So let's think about this. The JPM coin, they announced for institutional customers, if you give them a dollar in deposits, they'll give you a JPM coin that you then can move within the JPM ledger. Wait a minute, just use the dollar. Right. Well, I, don't, like, I really don't understand. Like, if you're just moving it within the JPM ledger, and it has to be dollar to dollar, you know, a one to one backing. It honestly doesn't actually, I don't understand what problem that solves. Now, back to my first answer look, if it solves the problem of JPM being associated as they're leaning into crypto, yay. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. Right. <laughs> Gotta love Brad. Walled gardens aren't the solution, but, uh, you know, these guys still, I don't think they have figured it out yet. So, here we have City now with their brand new, you know, and they're and they're and they're proud of it too, I'm sure, uh, which is kind of lame. Um, but this is what we have, guys. Uh, unfortunately for them, uh, you know, and for us, I guess this might take a little longer for uh, you know these U.S. banks to realize interoperability is going to be the key. You know, JPM is not going to use City's coin, and uh, City's not going to use JPM's coin, as Brad Garlinghouse did point out here. So we are still going to need. That method for interoperability, something that gets them all moving, all coordinated, i.e. something like an agnostic cryptocurrency to serve for that liquidity like an XRP or something similar. So don't worry, friends. The world won't agree on a JPM coin, nor a City coin, or a Wells Fargo coin. The world won't agree on an HSBC coin. It won't agree on a PayPal coin. The world won't agree. 
Get my point? I think it's coming through loud and clear, Anders. Thank you for that. So do you get the point? The interoperability is still going to be key. This Citibank announcement, I don't think is going to have an effect on how digital technology and cryptocurrencies like XRP are really going to move the world. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.